And boys and girls, hello and welcome from the heart of Germany, Frankfurt am Main, to the review about the Canon RF 24-70 f2.8 L ISUSM, a lens made for Canon mirrorless cameras, so make sure not to use it on a DSLR. Thanks to Munich, to Objektivvermietung.de, who were so kind to rent me this lens for making this review. Well, if you have any further questions, please make sure to leave a comment below. Make also sure to follow me on Telegram, one of the best messengers on planet Earth. You will find the link to my channel there in the video description of this review. Enjoy now the upcoming moments. Again, a must have lens for everyone who wants to be flexible and work with Canon EOS R models. This lens does not fit onto a DSLR, keep that in mind. The build quality of this RF lens is insane, so it's protected against dust and splash and weights 900 grams. I tested this lens on the Canon EOS R and the new EOS R5. The filters are a bit more expensive than with the EF versions because from now on you need an 82 mm diameter. Canon re-announces the distance indicator on the top side with the RF lenses as it was usual at the time with the EF lenses. The whole thing now takes place digitally on your camera display or in the electronic viewfinder when you film or shoot in manual focus. The lens has three rings. One ring for focusing, one for zooming and the extra ring may be programmed to make adjustments on the aperture, shutter speed, ISO and so on. The focus ring as well as the zoom ring feel a lot softer than with the old EF version. On the side you will find two switches, one for autofocus and manual focus and one for the image stabilizer which we'll have a look in detail later on. At 24mm it is almost irrelevant whether you shoot at f2.8 4 or 5.6. The dark edges will probably be visible. The further you zoom, the less vignetting you will experience. At 70mm and f5.6 there are almost no dark edges left. I can recommend the internal camera correction or Adobe Lightroom. Make sure to have a look in the video description below to download some sample files. Chromatic aberrations are virtually non-existent. Every now and then you might see a green shimmer. Nothing that should bother you. Again, I can recommend the internal correction or Adobe Lightroom for post-processing. With one mouse click, the whole issue will disappear. Let's have a look at flaring. For sure, there will be more than chromatic aberrations. It depends a bit on the angle you're pointing the lens to the light source. If you take portraits with this lens, you might be happy about some nice pictures when the sun goes down in the background while your model is standing in front of the camera. Let us first ask ourselves who needs such a lens. Well, I'm a big fan of fixed focal lengths, but some of you might want or might need to zoom. If you just want to carry one lens with you, you might find this lens a perfect companion. The 2.8 aperture plus a wide angle of 35, 50 and 70 mm. Ideal for press photographers, sport photographers, the next holiday or filmmakers. Here are a few examples for you. The autofocus was quite fast, make sure to update the firmware of the Canon EOS R and RP. A video on how this works is available on my channel. This will give the eye tracking a big boost. The focus was extremely fast in combination with the Canon EOS R5.
Here are two shots for you, one in Full HD and the other one in 4K. Remember that the EOS R as well as the RP only shoot with a crop factor, at least when you're shooting in 4K. Keep that in mind if you're a filmmaker. Not too long ago I uploaded the review about the RF 15 to 35mm. Be sure to watch it if you need a super wide angle lens. Well, 24mm is sufficient for most of the time. But if you're an interior, architecture or event photographer, you often need even less focal lengths. Therefore, I leave the decision up to you. If interior or architecture or landscape has nothing to do with your business, then go for it. By the way, I could not use this lens on my Ronin SC. Not because of the weight, but because of the eyepiece and its size. Therefore, I can recommend to use the DJI Ronin S. What we must not forget with all the euphoria is the sharpness. Canon is hitting one bullseye after the other. The RF lenses are all sharp. I haven't had a single RF lens that wasn't in focus and I tested almost all of them on my YouTube channel. The corners tend to be a bit softer than the center at 24 mm but the whole thing doesn't really matter in my opinion. At 70 mm the corners are also much sharper. You can find these and many more example photos in the video description below. Make sure to have a look. Well, the RF 24 to 70 mm comes with an integrated optical image stabilizer for up to five stops. The following scenes were all shot with the Canon EOS R5 and EOS R. If you want to use the digital IS of the R5, you will see that the image will be cropped. It's a super lens for all of you YouTubers and filmmakers. An all-rounder lens which is sufficient for most filmers out there. The 2.8 aperture is great for interviews and you only have to carry one lens around with you. The autofocus is super fast and you can rely on the eye autofocus and face tracking after the firmware update of the EOS R and RP. It's a little faster with the EOS R5 though. The lens for interviews, holiday videos and press. Now it's your turn. Where do you use this lens? There's plenty of space for your opinion under this video. The minimum focusing distance of the RF 24-70mm varies. At 24mm you can step up to 21cm or 0.69 feet to your subject. And at 70mm you have to take a small step back. 
you can see what I managed to pull out with this lens in the following moments. The 9 Aperture blades provide a very soft bokeh. Not as soft as with the Canon RF 50mm 1.2, but still nice to separate the foreground from the background. Ideal for interviews, close-ups, nature and product photography, so as for filmmakers. Again, one more lens for which it is worth spending money. Up to now, there was no RF lens that I have given a bad review. Maybe this simply because of the outstanding performance. Sure, you can expect something for your money. If you earn your daily bread with photography and video, you will not make a mistake with this lens. An ideal around a lens for your camera bag with a surcharge compared to the EF version, but this lens will do its job for the next 10 years. The 2.8 aperture provides a nice looking bokeh. The focal length is ideal for those of you who want to take only one lens with you. If you're looking for an additional lens which might suit your camera back, make sure to have a look at the RF 70 to 200 mm f2.8 version. The review to this lens is on my channel. All the best to my partner from Munich who was so kind to rent this lens to me for a review. Make sure to test this lens in advance before buying it. Make sure to follow me on Telegram, the best messenger on planet Earth with a channel function. You can find the link in the video description so as all the sample files. All the things I used to make this video are also listed below. All the best from Frankfurt am Main, Germany. See you very soon and tschüss.